We have a great lesson for you today. It's called change is good. Now, if we were to admit this to ourselves, we would find that any change in our life, our schedules, activities can sometimes bring added pain, stress, and even the thought of, I don't want things to change. Now, it would be great if everything stayed the same in our life for all time. But the reality is that things are changing all the time. Well, it is time for me to go right now, but I'll see you at the close of today.
call. Hello everyone, this is Professor Whoopi and we are going to whoopie up a big one for you today. So let's dive into our lesson. Whoa. Hey, today we will be talking about being more like God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 32, it says, Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you because you belong to Christ. Now that's in the Living Bible. And that was Ephesians 4 and verse 32. Whoa. Now, in the verse before this one, it says not to be mean, angry, or bad-tempered. So here the Bible tells us to be kind, or another word for that is thoughtful. Have you ever been unthoughtful? You, maybe somebody did something for you, and instead of telling them thank you, you just went on by, and you weren't kind and thoughtful as you should have been. The other word here is tender-hearted or gentle, and forgiving one another. These are some of the qualities that God wants us to have, all because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. You see, since God sent Jesus, and Jesus died on the cross for us and brought us forgiveness, then we need to forgive others as well because we belong to Christ. I can't put it any simpler than that. As believers in Jesus, we are to be different than the world, not just on Sunday, but every day we live, if we are true believers, and I hope that you are today. Whoa, all right, well, this has been a good one. Oh, I'm gonna get those guys good this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I since I've been turned into a maggot, I can get into a lot of places where people don't know me. But uh, and I have this magical thing because I got into this this liquid that was like atomic, and so I can grow myself very big or make myself very small. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the head villain and because he allowed the evilness to turn me into a maggot and he did not help me i'm going to get him in the process too but i'm going to stop those sin busters once and for all i will not let them have another day where they can go on and do what they want to do now okay now before i reveal my plan and then somebody fumbles it up i'm not telling you what i'm doing but i'm going to get them Get them all! <laughs> the evilness will love me and he'll turn me back into my manlyhood that I'm supposed to be. Yes! segment we will address the question how God is changing me for this we will look in the Bible at Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think then you will learn from your own experience how his ways will really satisfy you and that's in the living bible now if you're not a believer then you are part of the world plain and simple there is no middle ground where you can remain neutral you either are serving god or you are serving the world which is living for the enemy that is satan whoa now we are not to copy the behavior of this world but 
to be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all we do and think. In the King James Version, it says, for us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now the question is, how do we do this? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question. By allowing Jesus to change us from the inside out so that we can become the light on a hill for people to see Christ living in us. And when they see that, they want to have what we have. Oh, yeah. As we do this, the love of God will satisfy us more and more each day. But we must not follow the world and its desires. We are to set our eyes on Jesus and stay the course. Did you hear me? Set your eyes on Jesus and stay the course. Wow, that's good. In this segment, we are looking at how can I become a better person? For this, let us look at the Bible in Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. It says, Since we have such a huge crowd of men of faith watching us from the grandstands, let us strip off everything that slows us down or holds us back and especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and try to trip us up. And let us run with patience the particular race that God has set before us. Keep your eyes on Jesus, our leader and instructor. He was willing to die a shameful death on the cross because of the joy he knew would be his afterwards. And now he sits in the place of honor by the throne of God. Whoa! Now, first, the word men here also can refer to men and women. So, we have a great host of witnesses that are watching us run this race. The verse goes on to say that we are to take off anything that would slow us down or trip us up while running. Another version would say, throw off, throw off anything that hinders you. Now, run the race with endurance or patience, which means endurance. In other words, you're going to put up with those feelings when you want to say, I quit. And then you realize, I can't quit. I'm in this for the long haul for Jesus. And so you got to keep moving forward. You see... This race has no shortcuts, no cheat codes, or secret 
hidden things like many of your video games have. The last part in verse 2 says, Keep your eyes on friends and the world. No, no, no. It does not say that. It says, Keep your eyes on Jesus. That's right. Jesus went through the death on the cross, which was disgraceful. Yet now the Bible tells us he sits at the place of honor by the throne of God. So the secret to running the race successfully in this life is simply five simple words, and that is keep your eyes on Jesus. That's right. Let's see. That's one, two, three, four. That's right. Five words. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't ever forget that, everybody. Okay. Well, this is Professor Whoopi, and we have definitely whooped up a big one for you today. But it is time for me to say goodbye. Avirase. Arrivederci. Hasta la vega. Hasta la vega. Hasta la amiga. Amiga, amiga, amiga. Oh, but last but not least, everybody ready? Haruba boo! <laughs> oh yeah 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 yeah! Oh yeah! Oh that is just great! Okay, so don't forget everybody, like we say every week, that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and the Holy Spirit loves you. And this is Professor Whoopi, so do I. Goodbye! Well, you know, all these so-called Christians that tell me that change is good. Just let God change you. Change is good. How oh, you know what I say to that? Bah! Bah! Humbug! Change is not good. Change is for the birds, not for me. Mr. Bernie, you may not know, but Jesus really loves you. God sent his one and only son to come and live and die for our sins and bring us forgiveness. This is how Jesus changes us from the inside out. This change is good. Okay, let me be clear about something, okay? I understand where you come from with change is good, but you must understand that I don't care about change. I never cared about change, and I will not change for change. The world can change all at once, but I like the way I'm doing things, and I'm going to always do it my way, period. No ifs, ands, and buts. Mr. Bernie, I am so sorry you feel that way. I wish there was something I could do to convince you how this change is important and good. I got to go now, but I'll come by another day so we can talk. I do hope you'll be in a better mood. Now, watch what I do! Oh, I'm going to get all of them! Every single one are going to pay for what they've done! Yeah! Yo, 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 this is QB, the, the DJ coming your way, oh yeah. Hey, today I'm just going to take a moment and kind of wrap things up. I mean, hey, old Bernie, man, that guy's a stuffed shirt if I've ever seen him. Man, he is mad about everything. But you know what? That Jaden, hey, he's an awesome kid, man. He's talking about Jesus and how Jesus can change your life. And that's what we've been talking about today is how Jesus can change your life. And change is good when it comes that way. Hey, take it from QB. I am like the awesome DJ of all time. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, hey, you know, that maggot mud, hey, man, he's up to no good. I understand that the head villain got himself into a lot of trouble. And I don't know if he's going to be around 
at least for a while. But in the meantime, I gotta warn the Sin Busters because I have a feeling that Bag of Mud is out to get them. So, hey, this is QB, the DJ of the hour, a DJ of the day. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about Jesus more. But next week, we'll pick up with part two of this. So hang on to your hats and hang on to your jewelry. Don't lose anything in the process. See you later. God love you, man. Well, it's been great today. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I did. So I'm going to wrap it up by saying that our attitudes must be different than what the world is. We as believers need to live different lives than that of the world. Second, just because our friends are living for the world means that we as believers in Jesus must be separate from the world. We do not have to live or say the things that they do. We as the children of the King of Kings, saved by the blood of Jesus, are heaven bound and as we run the race of life before us, the only way to be successful in our walk with God is, and I want to emphasize this, keep your eyes on Jesus, always. Now, in case you haven't heard that, let me say it one more time. Keep your eyes on Jesus, always, and you will make it to heaven. Thank you very much.